Um, so thank you everybody for coming. Um, I appreciate the time you've taken up. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm going to give you a short presentation about um, the research and work that I've been doing over the last three years. Um, that's the title, an action inquiry into the improvement of being in support and training. It is actually slightly longer than that, but I decided to put it down to that for today. Um, and to, to give you some, some background about what, where I'm coming from today, um, basically what, what I've got is um, an introduction to me. Um, my name is Paul Williams, I work at Richmond School. Um, this is a picture of me being very young and smiley. I hope I'm not too different now. Maybe a little bit thinner than you That's how it goes on. I am, absolutely. Um, but my, my history is um, I went to school in Darlington. Um, I left school, went to college for two years, and I started working here. Um, two years into working at Richmond School, um, I got the opportunity to start working on a degree, um, which is a, a distance learning degree, basically, and it was completely done on, online. And, and what we've got, but what I've, I've done is it's a degree with Anglia Ruston University, um, and it's through what's called a course called Ultraversity, and it's run by the Ultra Lab team. And it's, it's the three people working together in one. Uh, and what this means is um, that I never actually seen my tutors, and part of the handout there's actually an article in the Guardian about the people who graduated last year. They were the first set of people to graduate, so, graduate. so I'm the second um, cohort of, of students who are coming through Anglia Ruston again without ever being to East Anglia or knowing exactly where it is. Um, I don't know where it is. Oh, good. <laughs> but to start with, I'll just ask you a small, a short question. Um, Jake was standing on one side of the river, and his dog Scruffy was standing on the other. Come on, Scruffy, come on, boy, shout with Jake. Uh, Scruffy crossed the river, ran to Jake, and got a treat for being a good dog. Now, the amazing thing was, Scruffy didn't even get wet. Now, how did Scruffy do that? Well, before we answer that one, um, I, I'll just talk about my research, but if you can just think about that, the fact that dog never gets wet. Um, now my research that I've done is, um, is an action inquiry, and some of you may be familiar with how action inquiry works, some of you might not be. But um, the action inquiry is my final project for this degree. And it's based on a large scale um, research project, basically. And the whole point of action inquiry is it's an ongoing cycle of um, planning to do something and actually doing some action. Uh, and then evaluating that action and finding out what happened, was it a, was it a positive outcome or a negative outcome, what would it again, what could I do better, basically re reflect upon the act. And then from that reflection, you plan further and carry out another act, and it's an ongoing spiral of, of action inquiry, um, and it just goes on and on forever, or, and, until you get to a, a, a suitable solution. Um, the way I worked at this was, um, I looked at, things in my job, because this is a work-based degree, it's, it's a degree about the way I work. And I reflected upon my role, and I, I thought, what, what would I like to know? What would I like to know more about to help me do my job better? Um, and what questions could I ask to find, to find out ways of working that are going to make my job better and, and the job I do for other people better as well? So I identified these three questions, basically, and they are quite long-winded. But how can I identify what teachers need for training and support. How can I improve the support and training that, they, that teachers actually get? And how can I improve my own practice and my own training and support that I give to teachers? <coughs> um, the whole process is encapsulated in these three cycles. And the red signifies the planning of, of what I've done. The amber is the um, action. Sorry, no, the amber is the evaluation and the green is the action. So from um, I looked at the review that we did of the 2005-2006 Twilight training last year, um, I analysed that, and I decided with Chris Paul um, to schedule the, the Twilight training slightly differently, um, so it's actually organised slightly differently from last year, that comes a little more apparent as we move on. Um, so from that scheduling, I then went to review the first four Twilight sessions that I've run this school year, looked at what I found, and, and realised that um, I need to ha have a lot better um, training materials used, more comprehensive training materials, things that people can actually take away from that session and, and use without me being there, just cutting me out of it a little bit more. And then I went on to review, review the assessment manager training that we ran, analysed that, and found out basically I'm, I'm on the right tracks, but there is further, further differential of training materials needed, and also the inclusion of more task-based task -based activities. So, sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, so what that points to is um, I need to carry on what I'm doing. I'm doing 
well so far, um, but there is slightly more um, more needed to continue with improvement. Um, the way I did this is uh, I asked, asked um, staff members who did Twilight training last year to complete a questionnaire, who have done Twilight training this year to do a questionnaire. I've also interviewed people after the assessment manager, or actually during the assessment manager training period, about all of those things I've mentioned last year, this year, um, and ongoing um, actions. Uh, I also had sort of my personal observations um, completing what's basically called um, a learning journal, which is basically a diary of everything that happens during my job, which is quite a task to keep. Um, having a full-time job and then coming home and writing about the day you've just had in a full-time job is quite, quite a difficult task. Um, so I did two sets of questionnaires. I interviewed five separate members of staff and I used my own personal observations and experience so to analyse the data um, that I used, that I, that I collected, sorry. Uh, there's three methods that I used to analyse the data, statistical classification and coding. So what, what I did with the data, um, if it was qualitative data, if it was data I got off a questionnaire, I basically looked at it, found what would be the best way to show this information, uh, and then I created a graph. And what I actually found was I didn't actually have that many responses. If you look at sort of the total responses I'm getting, was the maximum is four. So there is no point in showing that in a, in a bar chart, because it's, it's never going to make any sense. So I ended up showing things in pie charts. Um, to code the results, I actually took the, the prose writing that people had done, and I, I went through and I categorized the different sorts of, um, different sorts of responses I got. Um, into reoccurring themes and headings that appeared. Um, what I also found um, when I actually went through and did these um, classifications and, and, and categorising of, of the comments, um, from the second cycle, so basically after, after, pre, after last year's Twilight training that I was involved in, um, the first four sessions of this year, these were the results I got from the staff members that attended those sessions. Um, these are the, the, techno the technology based problems that, that we've had. Um, it, it looks quite interesting at the minute that there is basically it's all down to equipment or time, so equipment setup time, booking by IT rooms and scheduling. So there's always, there seems to be a, a theme about um, IT equipment and the time it takes to use or, um, or book. So looking at, at the, the things that were there about equipment and time, you have to actually have a paper on the barriers to the use of ICT in teaching, and um, it splits into sort of first order and second order barriers. Now first order barriers are, are the things that basically I just pointed out there, that, that came up in my research, which was um, lack of equipment. I mean, there, there's, there's other things like unreliability, lack of technical support, um, which at the minute they weren't reported to me as being an issue. It's not an issue. Um, so that was, that was quite... An interesting thing for me to see that actually we're no different from every other school is, is the first thing that, that came to mind when I showed that. But also I found that one study found that teachers who use technology most were likely to, compl to complain about the lack of equipment. So it's obvious that if you use more IT you will have more problems. It, it just goes on, that's the way it is. So that was quite reassuring. It's obvious that a bit of stating the obvious that if you do use more you will have more problems. But it is interesting to see that other people have found that issues do arise over um, the use of more equipment. Um, from the attendance of the, the Twilight sessions, what I did was I actually started off with two basic skills sessions. And not many people attended those sessions, actually four people attended two sessions. Um, so that came to me as, as two things. Staff that don't label themselves as needing basic training. Um, staff feel like they are competent enough to use IT equipment without um, extra help. Um, which is fine, but it also comes up as the second order barriers that I was saying about in the vector paper, about the belief about teaching and technology. Maybe teachers think that um, it's not relevant to them at the minute. They don't want to use IT in this way. Um, and also about the openness to change. Maybe um, staff, we give our staff members laptops over, over the summer. Maybe they haven't actually used them at that point. It's only the second week of the term. They might not have been used properly, so they haven't encountered problems, so we do think they need the training. Um, that obviously point on to more literature, which basically said that computers and officers prefer to be taught basic skills before addressing pedagogical uh, integration of technology. Basically, um, it's been reported that staff, uh, teaching staff would prefer to be taught basic skills, but um, in our case, it, it doesn't seem to be this, this way. Um, again, carrying on, it, it indicates the need for differentiated training. Um, Taking into account teachers' varying levels of computing experience and learning styles. Well, that's what we're trying to do with the basic training is, is say we're giving people the opportunity to do these, um, to do 